Hello and welcome to uh, today's webinar with Bright Vision. We are so happy that you have joined us for a 35, 40 minute session here today around the topic answering B2B tech companies top seven ABM questions. And it's me, Jacob Lovenbrand. I'm the managing director of Bright Vision. Uh, who are going to facilitate this with our expert and digital strategist here, Jacob Hammar. With yes. Me Hello, everybody. Yeah. Great. And uh, we are so happy to be discussing ABM because that's a very interesting and very hot topic. And a lot of marketeers is working with it uh, and planning for next year's campaigns and so forth. So I think we'll have a good session here today. Very, very shortly before we start diving into today's topic, we have two things to say. One is that we have a webinar offer for everybody who's in here. We will have free ABM workshops where we have one meeting where we do discovery, what's your situation, and then we help you formulate and present a strategy around campaigns in the ABM topics <clears throat> for free for at least uh, for, for the first five companies that uh, emails Jacob afterwards or during the workshop, uh, the webinar. So if you're interested to get a little bit of external insights in your own ABM campaign or ABM program planning, please reach out. We will be happy to help at least five companies for free. Also, a short word on Bright Vision. For those of you who are new to Bright Vision, <clears throat> the short version is that we're an agency that loves to help tech companies grow especially in the European market, but we're uh, slowly growing. At, uh, we're based in Sweden, but we do cover the whole Europe today and, uh, and do a lot of campaigns for different tech companies. So we're 100% B2B focused, and we're especially good at technology marketing. And we do have um, different services. We do offer a full service suite which can be good to know. We work both with uh, outbound and teleprospecting and different outbound methodologies to drive leads and generate revenue, but also digital and inbound and content and creative and all that kind of stuff as well, as well as helping clients setting up their MarTech stacks and working on the RevOps side as well. So uh, we're around 90 employees. We have done over 4,000 projects and campaigns within uh, driving revenue and driving leads for tech companies. So yeah, we do have a, a broad offering here. So uh, if you're in a situation where you would like to discuss kind of agency services, please reach out to me or Jacob afterwards as well. We will be happy to help if that's the case. With that said, let's dive into today's topic. And we are going to talk about a common questions we get when we held these ABM workshops or have ABM dialogues with clients, setting up campaigns and so forth. And you, Jacob, is running these kind of workshops on a regular basis. I'm doing it sometimes, but you're the, really the expert here in the room today. So I will be a little bit more facilitating the dialogue here and asking questions to you, Jacob. So. Let's dive right into it with the first question, and that's the basic one. But I think we should start there so we get everybody on board before we go too deep into the topic. But what is the definition of ABM? If you give us the high level introduction or just, you know, putting out the field there, what are we talking about here? That would yeah. be a good start. Yeah, absolutely. I think so. And because uh, there are a lot of definitions of ABM out there and uh, different companies uh, try to uh, coin the term in their way, so to speak. But account-based marketing is really a way to make your potential customers or <clears throat> existing customers really important and recognized. And it's a customer-centric approach to marketing through uh, personalization and very targeted and marketing activities and sales activities. Uh, and in short, the uh, approach um, includes uh, identifying your target accounts, your dream accounts that you want to go after and, and win as a client. You create tailored marketing and sales activities towards these target accounts 
um, across channels, really. Um, and then you execute, and it can be online, it can be offline, it can be telephone calls, it can be print uh, send outs, or whatever suits your overall purpose um, and what interests the uh, people at these target accounts that you're going after. And a crucial part of ABM is, of course, also measuring and analyzing all your efforts to gain those important account insights because account-based marketing is about understanding your target accounts uh, needs and current situation and what they're looking for in a solution provider. And this is a concept that has been around for quite some time now, and there's a lot of people talking about it. So flipping the funnel, going from that traditional or more broad inbound marketing where you start with maybe advertising to attract with content to attract uh, prospects. And then when you have converted them to uh, contacts, you can personalize and engage with them and then you can score those uh, contacts as deals. But ABM instead, of course, starts with selecting the accounts and then going after them in, in very targeted and personalized marketing efforts. Uh, and then you kind of go from there to build relationships with these accounts. And um, yeah, so that was the basics. And when you start to get concrete and start working with it, you need some kind of guidance to help you because ABM is very broad. It can be done in a lot of different ways. So there are some, some frameworks and models out there um, that you can work with for your ABM programs and activities. And we at Bright Vision have chosen to work with uh, this team framework, which is uh, coined by um, a company called Terminus that was uh, yeah, one of the, the first to talk about ABM in general. Um, and this team framework has four parts uh, that you want to cover. And of course, targeting, identifying your target accounts, uh, mapping out what key roles are involved in the pr purchase process, as well as ad identifying those as buyer personas uh, that you can, can use as support when you go to the second stage, uh, when you engage, when you create your marketing and sales activities, when you yeah, start advertising or sending out emails, what, whatever it can be, that's in that stage is where you kind of craft your your uh, activity and in the third stage uh, we go into uh, or we talk about activating so activating in terms of activating sales activating sales through feeding them insights from your marketing efforts getting that feedback from sales and helping them to take the most relevant action on certain accounts or contacts at these accounts. Uh, if it's a phone call, if it's an invite to an event based on what content that person has engaged with, for example. And the last, but yeah, again, very important part is measuring everything. So setting up both KPIs as well as making sure that from a technical standpoint, you can measure everything. Um, and when we talk about KPIs in, in ABM, it's important to cover both the marketing um yeah more marketing uh, related kpis such as uh, new marketing qualified leads um, this impression ctr and all those relevant marketing metrics but also uh sales kpis so pipeline revenue created um, new contacts at these target accounts how many deals you won as a result from this um, abm program for example so that was this model uh, is, is very good. Yeah, model. thank you, Jacob. And uh, thank you for laying out the foundation there. And just a quick comment to flip my funnel there. Uh, I think it was Sangram Vajra, who is the co-founder of Terminus, who, who actually coined that term. And he was uh, visiting our ABM day a month ago here at Bright Vision, a virtual yeah. event we had. And uh, yeah, so he, if you would like to know more about Flip, the funnel system. He has a podcast with the accepts that name, Flip My Funnel, <laughs> so, which is a really good source for, for additional ABM information as well. Okay, moving on to uh, the next question. 
great with the theory here, Jacob, but yeah. what does an ABM campaign look like in the practice? Yeah, <laughs> very common question. Uh, it's, it's easy to talk about theory without going into practice, but if we do that for, for a moment, we can see um, one example of how an ABM campaign can look like and one that we delivered for a Norwegian IT consultancy company um, a few months back. And uh, yeah, we had a, uh, a topic for the campaign with the geo. So this is the campaign in short, the results and, and the scoping of it. Um, but in the short, short uh, description of the campaign was basically a very targeted um, inbound, digital inbound campaign towards Norwegian municipalities in order and what we wanted to sell was services uh, around Microsoft Azure and that cloud uh, to migrate uh, municipalities to Microsoft's uh, cloud solution. And we did this, as I mentioned, through um, inbound marketing uh, or had an inbound marketing strategy behind it. Uh, so we created uh, original content for this campaign for all phases of the buyer's journey because we knew that among the Norwegian municipalities, the the it varied quite a lot where in the buyer's journey our buyer persona that we went after were. Uh, some were very, very close to a purchase decision looking for vendors who can help them migrate to the cloud, for example, but some were happy campers in their existing on-prem environment. Um, so we needed to to cover like all phases of the buyer's journey. And um, also something that we did for this campaign was that we crafted this buyer persona uh, and we had a target account list that we went after. So it was very clear who we were targeting uh, and that helped us to create like high quality original content. Um, and what content did we create? Um, so we, yeah, as I mentioned, we covered all pieces of the buyer's journey and uh, according to HubSpot's inbound methodology and uh, the three phases, awareness, consideration, and decision based on how much knowledge you have about the uh, solution and the value that you as a provider can bring. Um, for the awareness phase, we created a blog post, an ungated blog post published on this uh, company's website uh, for more, um, consideration stage content, we had two pieces. Um, one gated ebook that you could download and a live webinar that you can could uh, register to and take part of. And at the very end of, of the funnel, so to speak, we had one ungated case study, how uh, this Norwegian company have helped uh, one of the Norwegian municipalities to migrate to the cloud. And we also, together with this client, developed a very tailored offering. So a cloud journey workshop offering uh, just for these municipalities. Um, and this was some examples of how it looked. And um, so to promote the campaign, the way we got it out there, so to speak, was through email and paid advertising. Email was used both for sending out like um, database send outs uh, to existing contacts because we had some contacts at these Norwegian municipalities, but also for the automatic uh, email nurture workflow that was triggered upon form submission through ebook downloads and, and webinar signups. So uh, the ads were very targeted towards this target role, this bar persona at these target accounts. Um, yeah, and we made it all available. So it was very important. We knew that from the get go that all the campaign elements had the same look and feel. So everybody in the target audience could understand that this is one campaign tailored for me, so to speak. So this is how it can look like in, in practice. Yeah, thank you, Jacob. And, uh, and, and campaign for a consultancy company. So uh, yeah, this can take a lot of different turns, of course, and, and yeah. only the imagination uh, 
is 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 you know limiting us what we can be creative about but this is a a, a typical campaign for for a mid-sized company so to say that also had a very very strong result yeah awesome let's move on to the next one how does abm bring business value well we saw a little bit that you know the roi on that campaign was really good but maybe there's more to it yeah there definitely are and there are things you can measure and there are things you can't measure but abm brings business value it really does and there yeah i can go on i can have a webinar about this but to be uh, concise you increase efficiency by working with abm you spend more energy or your energy on the things that really bring value to you as a company uh, you don't spend time on things that don't and you spend even like uh, on, a, on a granular level like the advertising budget for example that is spent much more wisely because you know that you're targeting the right people at the right uh, accounts and and more overall business value that ABM brings is that you're becoming a customer centric organization and you you kind of give that or show that to your target audience that, that you care about the customer, you know their situation and how you can help them. And this uh, marketing and sales aligned thing that is uh, probably the most uh, common obstacle uh, when for, for companies that have started working with ABM. Um, there are conflicting interests and sometimes a lack of knowledge about what ABM brings to either marketing or sales. Um, but with, with ABM, when done properly, you run marketing and sales around you, the same goals. You can also faster uh, or shortening the sales cycle um, because you can tailor your communication um, more efficiently and accurately. And you can also expand your business much more easily when targeting, for example, existing clients. Um, and since you are target or talking to a more niche segment of the market, uh, there's much greater opportunity to become a expert within that area. And ABM is really good for B2B tech. Um, and why? So one thing is that B2B tech, um, some areas more than others, but usually there's long sales cycles. Uh, you have big average deal sizes and the potential uh, for an account can be very big. And there's many people involved in the purchase process. Everything from 10 to 50 to 100 people can be involved in a big purchase process. So, and the technology that you sell is very complex. Um, and depending on your target, whether you're targeting a end user or a decision maker and what role that decision maker has, like you need to tweak the messaging quite heavily. It's not one thing that you're selling with one message that everybody <laughs> think is relevant. Everyone has, has uh, their interests in regards to what you're offering. So um, with ABM, you can much more easily tailor your messaging towards the right person. So that, that's some business values that this brings. Yeah. And we got a question there that maybe we can stuck in here. It's uh, a question around how do you actually know that you reach the target accounts? Uh, and what's the difference between this setup and ordinary regular inbound campaigns? How do you ensure that you reach the target accounts on your list if you do inbound only? Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's a good question because inbound and ABM those aren't really conflicting and um, what what can look like an inbound campaign and an ABM campaign they can look very similar it's all about how you are targeting uh, as this person who asked the question is referring to so I would say that one thing is to target or understand where the person that you're targeting is like online or does that person more um relate and, and engage with i don't know a direct mail for example um but in this case that i showed we used linkedin because that was where our vibe sona were uh, at that time um 
And we knew that we could target or we knew we were targeting the right people because of we were creating a um, target audience based on the buyer persona and the target account list. And we were also measuring and making sure that these actually are the company or organizations and people that w went and visited our campaign landing pages. So with the right marketing automation system or tracking um, systems or tools, you can make sure that um, the right people are coming to your campaign, so to speak. So yeah, building target audiences at the right channels and measuring to make sure that all the right people yeah. are coming in. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And there's many channels we can choose. If you, if you have, for example, an outbound complementary pair part, you can do, of course, uh, phone calls as well and so on. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we come more to that, I think, later on in the presentation as well. So yeah. let's move on on how to think about which target accounts to choose for an ABM campaign. What do you have to say yeah. about that? <laughs> yes. Uh, and this is also something that comes up very often like how many should we target why should we target those how should we think about clustering accounts together and so on and i would say the first thing to to think of is how you should treat this uh, account these accounts that you're going after should you treat it as yeah what level of abm should you work with is it one to one where you craft all your campaign or activity elements towards one specific buyer persona at one specific company, treat that account like its own individual market. And that is, that allows for a very, to like very personalized approach, of course. Um, but more, I would say more common is the one to few and one to many. So one to few is where you cluster very similar uh, organizations and accounts together with a lot of strong com common denominators between them, uh, which gives you the, the plus side is, of course, what you lose in personalization, you gain in, in target audience uh, size. So you can target more people, um, with, but still be like pers personalized in one sense. One too many is, of course, that a bit less personalized than, and relevant, but on the plus side, you're targeting more uh, accounts and more people. And that is one aspect of, uh, of how to think about uh, target accounts. Another aspect is of course, and this is something that I've noticed that it doesn't come, it, it isn't the first thing that marketing people think of, but when, when talking about target accounts, you should consider the business value uh, of these accounts. So here I've made some, some calculation examples of how you can think about the investment really and the potential outcome. So if you have $100,000 as a marketing budget, you can target that to one account or a few accounts or many accounts. But what you have to think of is what, what revenue does these uh, or can these close deals from this campaign bring? And how long do, does that account stay client of yours? So you can kind of calculate how, if the investment makes sense. And this is also a very good example of how important it is to, to talk to sales, because this might be information that sales know like the back of, back of their hand, but marketing struggles with coming up with these figures. So work with sales to calculate the potential ROI of your ABM efforts. And yeah, and lastly, like, or overall recommendations, it's all about finding the common denominators uh, between those accounts when you're clustering. If you go one to few or one to many, find the common denominators. And here are some examples of those, um, some like common, common denominators, but there are many, many more, and you can be creative with this as well. As long, as long as you can use and leverage the common denominators in your messaging, in your marketing, it's relevant. So 
think about this and try to make it as strong and as many as possible within one target account list because then we know that the people that we're targeting will will engage with the campaign or activity great that was about uh, uh, targeting yeah and you already mentioned now in this uh, fourth question that it's important to work together with sales so the next question is naturally <laughs> how to find sales and marketing around ibm uh, abm and why is that is so important yeah um, and you usually hear that aligning sales and marketing is a struggle that a lot of marketing managers especially struggle with um, but that and that's a problem in general but it's even more important to work with sales when it comes to account-based marketing because it's it, it goes so closely or it, it's so closely related to your sales and core business like with a calculation roi example um, that i just mentioned but what it brings uh, a good alignment between marketing and sales you create better campaigns because you get the sales insights when you plan the campaign sales get much more relevant and qualified leads because we have that insight from sales in the preparations of the activities um, and yeah just making sales a part of, of the abm marketing part will make them more likely to actually follow up and prioritize uh, the leads that marketing generate and yeah you will get better performance you will reach your K kpis more easily as a marketer if you talk to sales <laughs> beforehand and overall you make more money at the end um, because it's better marketing and it's better sales which means better roi um so um so how to do this then um and here are again some some recommendations and tips um, i would say include sales early uh, as early as possible create even maybe an account-based marketing team that consists of both sales and marketing representatives, so to speak, uh, and really pick their brain when it comes to buyer persona, target accounts, potential um, ROI on, on activities, uh, average deal size, and so on. And I think marketing in general uh, should, should be understandable, understanding of sales unique knowledge about the market about the products about the target accounts and about the buyer personas um, and sometimes you need to educate sales on why they should care about abm again like relate back to what i mentioned about getting more qualified leads more easily cross-selling upselling to accounts and so on helping sales to do a better job basically and one way you can do this is to, when you run ABM activities, you should have recurring meetings with sales reps. It can be this ABM team, if you'd like, uh, to both share insights, as I mentioned, uh, the A in the team framework, share insights from marketing to sales, but also ask sales for feedback uh, and feedback that they get from their accounts on marketing activities. If this, target account x uh, liked our webinar or not did they mention it uh, and so on so yeah sales and marketing need each other but both parties need to understand why i think uh, sums it up mm. yeah that's great and another question there a bit <laughs> more practical now how do yeah. we start where do we start yes uh, and again, you, you soon very quickly become practical uh, when talking about ABM because you can theorize in eternity. But how to get started? And here is um, a short and sweet roadmap for how to get started or how to work even with ABM. And I would say that first thing you, that you need to do is to set up this ABM team. Um, mm -hmm. It can be one from marketing and one ABM ambassador over at sales, for example, that understands the value of ABM. Um, 
so that would be a good start for a pilot project, for example. Um, so, and then you have to define the goals for this ABM um, approach. Why are you doing this? How do you do this? What do you want to achieve with your account-based marketing? Um, and thirdly, you need to consider your ABM tech stack. Like, I'm not saying that everybody should invest in, in huge ABM platforms as the first thing, but you need to evaluate, okay, what systems do we currently have then? And that we can leverage in our account-based marketing efforts. Usually, um, for example, um, marketing automation systems usually have some functionality that can be used for account-based marketing um, that you already have in your tech stack. So leverage that. Um, and then you need to go into this planning uh, of, of activities. So identifying the target accounts, selecting the channels and messaging for this first campaign or activity, and execute that campaign um, across channels and continuously evaluate, learn, and improve your both marketing, like you will learn a lot about what messaging um, will work the best, but you will also improve your way of working together with sales, your internal processes and so on. And that is just as important to really get bang for your bucks for your ABM program to work efficiently. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, this is something, uh, some, some clients that I, or companies that I talk to are afraid that ABM project projects need to be big. And I wouldn't say that it necessarily has to be. Um, but the first ABM project should be you should do work by the book, so to speak, in terms of planning, strategy, target accounts, mapping buyer personas, like all that work, all the strategy work needs to be done. And that is an investment energy and time, but it doesn't have to be a two year long campaign with a lot of paid advertising. Um, and you should also practice or you should you should see your collaboration with sales as <laughs> always practicing. Make it better, make it more efficient. Uh, one way to do it is to have in workshop format to craft the campaign messaging and, and talk about target accounts, talk about the bar personas. And then when you have an ABM activity going, should have this recurring meetings together with sales to get that feedback loop between uh, the two yeah, often two different departments. And uh, yeah, before you get started, understand that like you won't probably close a super huge deal with your dream account that you've never earlier engaged with. Uh, ABM takes a lot of time, uh, but when done properly, and we see that the our clients, the one that gets the most best results out of ABM is those that were early adopters of it and have worked with it because um, it takes time to convince accounts to be, become a client of yours, of, of course. Um, but it, it also takes time to develop these efficient processes, these scalable ABM programs and ways of working with ABM. So be, um, be <laughs> last tip is be kind to yourself, set reasonable expectations for your first project uh, and see it as a learning uh, activity um, that you probably will improve the next time you do something. And it can be a paid advertising campaign or it can be an email send out. It doesn't have to be a big, long campaign. No, exactly. So start small and grow from there. And you can, mm -hmm. you know, you can discuss really advanced campaigns in, in an upcoming webinar, but this is of course, uh, a way of where to start and, and start to focus on. And we have a question on that. Uh, one uh, participant here asked, looking at research done by Terminus that you mentioned, state of ABM, only 10% of the customers use ABM for lead gen. It's rather used to close new deals and accelerate pipeline and so forth. How do you see on that? Yeah, and I would say, I've, I've actually read that report yesterday again. Um, so uh, 
I would say that, yeah, lead generation doesn't necessarily have a purpose of its own. It, it doesn't have an intrinsic value to it. Um, closing new deals, I think, I think lead generation is usually a, like a mean or way, way to achieve closing new deals. Um, I don't, I don't think like building a contact database shouldn't building a big contact database shouldn't be your goal with ABM maybe, or it's not that common, but closing new deals. And if you think about, okay, how do you close new deals? How do you close a deal with an account that has never engaged with you? Well, you probably need to <laughs> lead generation is a part of achieving that yeah. along with social selling or paid advertising or awareness. Um, so yeah. Yeah, it might also be a definition since ABM emanates from large client sales since uh, uh, that's of course uh, where we start out. How, how can we close, uh, you know, get business from a few really important, the big potential clients or existing clients that we can learn and expand more on and so on. So it might also be that a lot of clients that are running ABM campaigns are targeting small clients with high potential. So it's a kind of mix lead gen, but also expansion. So it might be a mix of responses and um, uh, reasons to that. But our take on lead gen using ABM for lead gen, uh, we think it's really, really effective since it's basically the idea to go small with a very, very targeted message, try to make it as personal and personalized and, and adapted as possible for that segment or, and that's saving a lot of money most of the times if 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 done right of course yeah and the last question then we will have a very exciting lightning round with, uh, <laughs> <laughs> really very short questions and, uh, or comments but the last one what's an effective abm process really short there before going into the lightning round and then we have more time for q and a's yes and yes more. i will try to be efficient as well uh so ABM process. I mentioned this a couple of times, but thinking about the way you work with ABM, that is what I refer to an ABM process. So if we'll just consider and think about the building blocks of account-based marketing, you have this good understanding of target accounts, you have defined the buyer personas, you have the tick set up in your marketing automation tool, maybe CRM, advertising channels, analytics tools, you have a process, uh, these like campaign workshops and weekly meetings and so on uh, for executing activities as well as collaborate with sales. Uh, you also set project milestones and learnings and insights is a natural part of ABM. So a good ABM process is something that can be repeated and can be scaled because I always recommend our cl my clients to start small but have scalability in mind. So these are the questions that I continuously ask my clients, like, can this way of working be repeated? Can it be scaled? And repeated and scaled in terms of other markets, other countries, regions, uh, as well as for other products or solution areas towards different target account lists or different business units uh, repeated over time, for example. like having that scalability um, in mind when, when even with the first ABM project, I think you will, you will gain a lot from that later on in, uh, in your ABM journey, so to speak. Hmm. Great. That was the last question. Now you have prepared 20 very <laughs> quick tips, one sentence each on how to succeed with ABM and you have Three minutes, Jacob. So <laughs> go ahead and then we'll uh, go down for landing. Yes. So the first, um, anchor ABM marketing in the sales organization with the dedicated ABM ambassador. Usually a good way of starting working with sales. Secondly, set realistic expectations. Uh, ABM is not for quick wins and it, it, it might be hard, but yeah, rather set realistic expectations or even downplay your, your expectations from this and then exceed those better than the opposite. 
yeah, and this is what I already mentioned, but have scalability in mind from the start. And don't you don't necessarily have to see ABM as kind of this huge shift from broad traditional inbound marketing based on uh, a type of company that you're going after. But ABM can, and I think maybe should at the start at least, be a complement to other marketing approaches. You can still do your awareness campaigns to a broad segment of companies. And yeah, set specific KPIs and set KPIs for your ABM program as a whole, uh, maybe yearly, uh, yearly KPIs for your all your ABM efforts, as well as specific KPIs for every activity that you do, uh, because KPIs helps us measuring. And develop buyer personas for all the key roles in the buying center or more than one. Uh, and when I talk about buying center, I mean like those influencers without any formal uh, decision power, the end users um, and the more formal decision makers maybe, as well as the gatekeepers that takes contact or what it can be. Um, and regarding content, be smart, repurpose what you have today and tailor that to your ABM account list and um, can be done if you want to start small. You should tailor both visuals and text to be relevant, like to tailor every part of your campaigns and activities to your buyer persona and target account list. And use a mix of content formats, videos, webinars, infographics, in interactive infographics, interactive content like quizzes or eBooks, but don't have everything in plain writing. And you should include salespeople in the planning of marketing activities as early as possible. Make classic sales tactics a part of your ABM strategy. It can be outreach on LinkedIn. It can be a phone call. It can be a going to a, an exhibition or a conference. You should, yeah, again, calculate the potential upside in your target accounts. You can always map your target accounts with telemarketing efforts. And that's organizational mapping. Understand who reports to whom, how the different departments are organized, and so on. Uh, and yeah, talking about phone calls, don't waste your phone call to the decision maker too early, because that's a shot that you only can have once in a while. And yeah, and take advantage and leverage your ABM features in marketing automation and CRM platforms. There probably are some in your existing tech stack. And um, be granular. ABM is about being <laughs> having attention to detail and talking about like individual people at different accounts and set specific automations for contacts from your target accounts. And one thing that helps you in your ABM efforts as a whole, set up maybe yeah industry specific landing pages or landing pages uh, for a segment of your target list, for example. Leverage always on because ABM takes time and having always on advertising, like slow and steady pace rolling all, all the time with retargeting helps. Make SEO a part of your ABM strategy. And if targeting existing clients, you can use ABM tactics to make them raving fans. Retention, defending those accounts, keeping those accounts as clients longer. ABM is perfect for that. Whew. Almost three minutes, Jacob. Great. Thank you, Jacob. That was quick. That was a real lightning round. 20 great tips. And we will send off the deck, of course, afterwards to everybody. And uh, with that, thank you so much uh, for that content, Jacob. Also, again, reminder, if anybody wants to apply for a free workshop where we actually put in a lot of work, so uh, you can claim your spot. Just email us, either Jacob or hello at Bright Vision or something like that. So, uh, or click the link there and uh, we'll, we'll get back to you. And uh, if there's more questions to it, we'll be happy to stay on a few minutes here to answer questions. Uh, mm -hmm. But the content is uh, done for now. 
But we have a question here from uh, Emma who says that if you're on a small budget, what's your best tips for successful ABM activities? Um, that's a, a very good question. And I think one part of it is to, um, hmm, when we talk about small budget in terms of resources or media budget, it kind of depends, but there are definitely activities that doesn't cost that much money. It's more on your own time. For example, mapping manually an account in uh, on LinkedIn with using Sales Navigator. Uh, if you have existing contacts in your database, maybe do an outreach to them, uh, inviting them uh, to uh, to a very uh, personalized event maybe for an event tailored to one account and uh, maybe a webinar for one account i don't know uh it, you can be creative but um when it comes to budget in terms of like advertising or using an agency it doesn't have to be expensive but it needs to be clever <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah that's great any else any more questions here no well, if you have questions, just email us. We will yeah. have to answer. And uh, with that, we are so happy that you joined us here today. So thank you so much for your time. We'll be in touch with the recording and the deck and so forth. But uh, with that said, thank you so much and have a great day. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.